Welcome to the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel, where we focus on overcoming low vision challenges. Hi, my name is Mike. Today's video, it's all about the blind person team tips and tricks. The first tip I'd like to share with you about a blind person cane is, generally speaking, a blind person cane serves one major function, and that is to identify a person that has visual acuity issues or visual impairment, whether they're dark blind or legally blind. The uh, white cane with the red tip is pretty much internationally recognized as someone being blind. Now, there are discussions out there that involve, you know, just the cane being solid white. And as I understand it, in some parts of the world, the solid white cane signifies that a person is deaf. And I guess in other places, it's uh, an indicator as a person being deaf and blind. But uh, the, the main thing to focus on here is a, a white cane, whether it has the red tip or the red band, I guess you should say, on the bottom section of the, the folding cane. And uh, on a fixed cane, like the, the one that I have here, has the red band across the bottom of it, is, is an indicator. That's to tell everybody around us that the reason that we're tripping over stuff, we're stumbling around, whatnot, or we're feeling the way with our hands is because we have a visual acuity problem. You know, we're visually impaired. We're, we're either legally blind or dark blind. Another function of some blind person canes that are built more robustly is for support. Now, those are, they, they serve double duty. One is they indicate, you know, they're still white with a red tip. Most of them are but they're, they're built substantially stronger. So they'll help support a person that has problems walking. You know, they might have a limp, they may have a bad leg, bad foot, or they just need the additional support. In, in that instance, they aren't as much a mobility tool as they are a stability tool and an indicator that the person is, you know, either dark blind or legally blind. They have a visual impairment. For my uh, next tip that I want to share, I'm going to stay with the uh, visually impaired label for a moment. And, and the reason that I want to do this is because a lot of folks come up to me and they ask me why I have my blind person cane, why I use the blind person cane. But, and, and I bring that question on, on myself quite a bit and, and let me explain why. When I'm out and about at uh, the local uh, softball park, Newburgh Girls Softball Park, I volunteer. I'm on the board maintenance director. Um, I, I spend a lot of time out there raking dirt, putting in bases, cutting grass, you know, just all that kind of stuff that goes along with maintaining a, a softball complex that has, you know, basically six full-size girls softball fields. And, and one t-ball field, you know, which is a smaller, more condensed package for, for the younger players. You know, they, they start playing softball out there at four and five years old, which is just phenomenal to me how, how good athletes some of these little girls are and how much fun they have. It's, 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 it's great. But I spend a lot of time out there without my blind person cane moving around the area. And, and part of that is because, well, I've been out there doing this for, oh, going on six years now, I think. So I know where everything's at. I know where the sidewalks are. I know where the gravel is. I know where the gates are. I know where the bases are. You know, all these little things that, that I need to, to know. I, I have a pretty good idea where they all are on each field. So I, I don't move around out there with my blind person cane. I, and part of that is, one, I, I know where everything's at. I memorize where everything's at. But second and most importantly for folks to understand is I am legally blind. I am not dark blind. And although a lot of people are confused by that, once we explain it to them, it, it's not quite so cumbersome. And, and I explain it to him this way. I say, well, if I'm looking straight at you, I don't recognize your face. I'll, I'll understand after a while 
what voice goes with what person. You know, so I'll identify you with your voice. And then, then also I'll identify you with, a, you know, a certain age group of kids or, you know, a certain field. You know, some people practice on one field all the time. And, and most of them, you know, especially with the younger groups, they're all earlier in the evening and the older groups are always later in the evening. So these are all little clues, little tips that I use to help compensate for my visual impairment. And it doesn't make it necessarily a have to case for me to have my cane with me all the time. So that's me being legally blind. Now folks that are dark blind, you know, may have a different story to tell. I know some that are dark blind and, and I know they don't always use their blind person cane with their visual impairment. And that's because they've over, they, they, they've discovered other ways to compensate. They've found other ways to get around in their world, you know, to overcome their low vision challenges. And, and some of it is they count steps. Some of it is they listen and they can hear what's going on in the room. And by the sounds that a room makes, they know where they're at in their home or their building or their workspace. You know, and some of that has to do with the ticking of a clock or the running of a fan or, you know, familiar voice in this area or that area. You know, whether it's from the television a phone or a live human being or or maybe they have a pet maybe they have a dog maybe they have a cat or a bird that makes certain noises i know i've got a a little dog that uh, loves to snore when she's sleeping and uh, when she takes her daytime naps Brittany just loves to curl up on the couch so i know that she is in the family room i know that she is on the couch and how do I know this? Because the dog snores. So, you know, all these little things help visually impaired people get around with or without the use of a blind person cane. And uh, while we're talking about the blind person cane, um, for me, I use it for mobility. And I use it to help people understand that, yes, I am legally blind. You know, so for that reason, I don't really have a particularly robust cane that would be required for, for my size as a stability tool. I, I use my, my folding cane. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five sections held together by a bungee cord. That um, it's, it's like a 62-inch cane for those of you that are interested. And that's because I'm a, a big guy. I'm tall. You know, I'm 6'5", thereabouts. Depends on the mood that I'm in. You know, so I have a, a big, long cane. And, and it works. It, it, it's very well. You know, one of the shortcomings of this cane is, you know, when I'm out in uh, rough terrain, where I might run into a pothole or a curb or something like that that stops me in my tracks or stops my cane in my tracks, you know, sometimes the... The handle looks like a golf, you know, the, the end of a golf club. This handle right here will, will poke me in the belly. But, um, heck, watching uh, another YouTube channel, Sam, on The Blind Life, he was doing a, a review on the um, No Jab cane, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I guess it's a new product to the market. If I, if I can, I'll try to and make sure I post a, a link in the description down below maybe an Amazon link so that you can go and check it out and see if it's something that might work for you. Or if I can find it again, I'll, I'll post a link to Sam's video and you can, you can watch the uh, review that he does. It's pretty informa pretty informational, pretty good stuff. But in addition to my folding cane, I also have, this is my first cane that I ever got when I was at Heinz Blind Rehab Center in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, for the, for the vets out there that know, you know, Heinz is the blind rehab center in Chicago for a lot of vets. But I like it. It's a solid white cane. It's got the red band on it. And it's got this little narrow tip on the end of it. It's about like my finger. The reason I like this cane is because it provides me more tactile feedback. And, and by tactile feedback, I mean when I'm walking around out in my neighborhood, it's where I primarily use it because that way I don't have to have to be able to fold it up to put it in a car or, you know, in some Uber friend's car, pickup truck, you know, whatever, because it doesn't, doesn't fold very well. But when I'm out and about just walking around the neighborhood, the solid piece provides me more tactile feedback. I can drag it around and it doesn't have the, the problems that some of the uh, folding canes do with getting a little bit loose and a little bit rattly 
or bending or breaking when I get it caught in a pothole or something like that. It's got to put enough, enough flex in that, uh, I don't know if it's fiberglass or some kind of carbon fiber or whatever it is. It doesn't weigh very much. It's pretty strong. I've had it for 10 years or so, so it's, it's held up well. I try to take care of it, keep it clean. Um, but uh, that small tip helps me to, one, if I'm walking around in a yard or someplace where there's grass, there's turf, I can kind of pick it up and just kind of probe. I, I can pick it up and probe with it instead of trying to sweep it and slide it back and forth. Now, when I decide that I am on, you know, like a blacktop road or a smooth surface, I can just easily slide it around, you know, tap, 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 slide from right to left, right to left, and, and maintain, you know, a pretty straight line when I'm trying to line up with a curb or the edge of the street or something like that. So it provides me some tactile feedback that, that I find is more acute than the folding cane. The folding cane, it kind of wobbles around a bunch and there's, you know, it's got five or so joints that each one of those joints has uh, some slack in it and it moves around and uh, it just doesn't provide the tactile feedback. So that's, that's why I have the two different canes. I'm thinking about maybe that uh, no jab cane. I may have to pick one of those up just to see if that shock absorber thing in the handle really it actually does work. But dare I regress. We were talking about visual impairment and how it impacts a person's use of the blind person cane. So any questions, any comments? We'd love to hear from you. Just comment section down below, provide something for me there. And uh, now let's move on to our next tip. Okay, are you ready for tip three? Awesome, here we go. We're gonna discuss a little bit how to select the proper blind person cane for an individual. And when it comes to getting the person a blind person cane, there's a couple of different things or two questions that you probably want to ask. It may be part of the same question. One is, what type of cane, how are they going to use it? What do they expect the cane to do for them? Some folks, they just need a little help from, with mobility. They, they need something that is portable, that they can fold up and put in their EDC bag, a purse, whatnot, get in and out of a car, you know, put it in a glove box or something like this. And, and they basically just need it so that they can, you know, get some tactile feedback when they're out and about. And they can negotiate uneven terrain, whether it's going upstairs, downstairs, through curbs, around curbs, over curbs, that kind of stuff. And, and you know, determine, you know, what's going on tactically. The other person that has some uh, mobility issues to start with, you know, they, they can't walk very far or they, it's hard for them to get in and out of a chair or in and out of a car, you know, that kind of stuff. They need a little stability. They need something that's, that's stronger than your typical mobility cane. Because your typical mobility cane that you're going to see, the folding cane, the, you know, like I've got here, they are not going to support a person's weight. You know, they, ju they just won't. They'll bend, they'll break. They, they do all kinds of stuff where... You know, a, a true stability type cane is going to be more robust. It's going to support the person's weight. And, and you and you go about determining which one of those you're going to need. Which one of those is going to best suit the blind person's need. And, and you know, there's no hard and fast rule here. You know, even somebody that's highly mobile may have a knee injury or something like that, and they need a stability cane every now and again or for six weeks or six months while they're convalescing or while they're healing. You know, so it may be where a person needs one of each, one for mobility and one for stability. It just depends on, you know, the weather or how they're convalescing or how well they're doing. And... You know, once you decide that, if you want to go with a mobility cane, you, you can decide whether or not you want one or more canes. You know, they're, they're, I've got, I couldn't tell you, I probably have a half a dozen different canes. I keep one in each vehicle that I ride in. You know, my, my kids have got canes in their car. My wife has got a cane in her Suburban. I've got one here on my desk. And in part, that's because I forget. Sometimes I just walk straight out of the house and forget it. But I've gotten to where I can rely on there being one in the vehicle that I'm going to get in. And if not, well, hmm, I guess I just have to remember to take my cane that's on my desk with me or just struggle through it. And struggle through it with a legally blind person in unfamiliar situations is 
not the safest thing to do because um, there are occasions when I stumble and almost fall. I haven't ever fallen yet, but I can see how easily it would be because I'll miss a curb. I'll misjudge a curb. I'll trip over curbs and stuff like this. So it's, it's important that whether you're legally blind or dark blind, use a cane. Now, when you go to select a mobility cane, like I said, you got the folding cane or you got the solid shaft, the solid canes that have no joints in them, you know, like this one I've showed you before. This one I like, and I like it better because of, you know, what we discussed earlier. I get a better tactile feedback than that. And um, it's, it's personal preference from that, from that position. So once you've decided you need a mobility cane, pick the one that's best suited for you. Or you may end up getting more than one for different occasions. Once you've selected it, you need to determine what size you're going to need. Now, the folding canes and the mobility canes, they pretty much all come so that they're, they're lightweight, they're easy to control. And the lightweight makes them easier to tap with, makes them easier to sweep with. And, and also, it, it provides more of a, a tactile feedback than a big, heavy, clunky thing does. You know, just imagine trying to find your way with a broom. Yeah, it's long enough, and yeah, if you hold it properly, you could do that with, but it wouldn't provide you with as much tactile feedback because one's got a big old wide end on it, and uh, the handles are, are pretty stiff, you know, so it's not going to be the lightest thing in the world to move around with either. So, folding canes aren't as tactile as the solid canes. You know, each one of those little joints has got some motion in them. They're a little bit loose. Like when I take this apart, I'll try and show you here. So, see how this one moves? It's because I've got kind of a, a loose joint here. That kind of takes away some of the tactile feedback. And even this, it's, it's got a little bit of a movement to it. You know, they just got a little movement to the, to the joints. They just slide together. But you can still, and a little bit here, a little bit here, and, and more than a little bit here, it all adds up to where it, it kind of slows down the response to the tactile feedback that you get. Whereas with this little guy right here, there, there's no motion at all. You know, I, I can flex it, I can bend it, but there's nothing that telegraphs improper signals or tells me that I'm hitting something that I'm not. And that's the way some of those joints feel, you know, just a little subtle tick instead of it being a crack in the sidewalk or a seam in some pavers or something like that is actually the cane itself. So once you determine that, then you, the size for the uh, long cane, whether it's a folding or a single piece, the general guideline is, you know, where your sternum is when you're standing straight up, your bottom of your rib cage or the nipple line, you know, just draw a straight line across your nipples. You want something that's at least that long from there to the floor. Personally, myself, I like something that's a little bit longer because I take long strides. And, and the longer stride that you have, the longer the cane you do have. You know, when they, when they fold up, it doesn't really matter how much space they take up in the bag because there's not going to be you know, an inch or so difference in them when they're folded up as far as accessibility, as far as being able to put them in the, the door panel or put them in an EBC bag or put them in a purse or what what have you, or slide them underneath the seat of a car. I've, I've had short, you know, my shorter canes and my longer canes, they all fit just equally as well. I just prefer the longer length because it reaches out further in front of me and helps me to maintain my longer stride. So... That's something to take in consideration too, you know, when the individual that you're looking to get a cane for, how athletic they are, you know, if they're tall or if they're short, if they take long strides or if they just kind of shuffle their feet, you know, if they're, they're older and they're, you know, I hate to use the word feeble, but for whatever reason, they just kind of shuffle along. They don't get in a big hurry. They don't take long strides and you probably could get by with a shorter cane and a shorter cane means a smaller cane. Shorter, smaller canes generally means they're, they're lighter weight. So folks that don't have the hand strength won't have to contend with as much weight, even though they're not very heavy to start with. Every ounce counts for some folks. 
So that's the folding cane or the, the long cane. Now, when you start talking about um, the stability type canes that I'm going to call them, you know, something that you can lean on that'll support your weight that if you need to push down on to help get up out of a chair because of a back injury or a knee injury or whatever, you know, the handicap is, I guess we could say. You want to get a stability cane that will support your weight. And then you want one, again, sometimes a little bit longer is better than something shorter. You know, a good guideline to start with, to start with something that is long enough that when it's flat on the floor will reach your hip. That's generally a good place to start. And uh, like I said, a little bit longer is better than short. If they're too short, you can't add length to them. It just You can put however many little rubber bumpers on the bottom of them you want to, but it's not going to be the same as having a, you know, a good sized cane with a decent non-slip type tip on the end of it. You start putting a bunch of cushion on the bottom of it, and then that kind of makes it a little bit unsteady situation for, for folks that really rely on that to, to be steady, to actually provide some support. So um, a little bit longer, you know, an inch longer than your hip is a good place to start. You can always whittle it down if you need to, but I would avoid getting something too short. And uh, basically that's how you determine the size of a mobility cane and also a stability cane, I want to call it. And then, you know, normally your blind person canes come white and red. There are different tips that you can put on the ends of them. The, the smaller the tip, the more tactile feedback they're going to provide. The downside to that is they'll get caught in every nook and every cranny that your stick or your cane comes into contact with. Like some of the expansion joints in a concrete sidewalk, they'll get stuck in that. Some of them, especially those that have were saw cut and weren't put in with a trial so they don't have a, a beveled or a round bull nosed edge on that seam. Some of those are, are really abrupt and they'll stop you. Your, your, your cane will get stuck in that crack and it'll damn near yank the cane out of your hand or it'll stop you and you know, poke you in the gut like we have talked about before. And um, one of the things that you know, folks will do to circumvent that is they'll put a roller tip on it or, or a big mushroom tip on the end of it, which is which is all well and good if, if that's what you need, but just keep in mind that it's going to take away the tactile feel. It's all going to, it's also going to add weight to the end of the cane, which is going to make it harder to pick up and to tap, harder to move back and forth, especially if you have to go very far. You know, for short jaunts, like if you're just getting out of the car, you're going to the barber shop, may not make any difference at all. But if you're going to get out of the car and you you park in uh, one of um, you know, the big box stores, handicapped parking places like you know, Walmart or what have you, Target and whatnot, you know, you're probably going to have to walk 75 or 100 feet from your parking spot to the front door. And then once you get inside the building, you know, some of these super centers and stuff like that, you may end up walking a quarter of a mile inside there trying to find something because they always seem to put the toilet paper on one side and then they put the the last thing that you're going to need on the other side. So you're walking all over the place. It's like walking all over a small city. So it's easy to walk a quarter of a mile when you go to Walmart to just to pick up a couple of items. You go in to pick up hot dog buns. They're on one side of the store. You want some hot dogs or some brats to go with it. They're on the other side of the store. And then you got to walk all the way back to the other side of the store to get to the checkout line that happens to be open. That doesn't have 15 people standing in it. So, um, these are all things to take into consideration. You know, somebody with mobility problems may not want to worry about that anyway because they're not going to walk that much. But as for the rest of us, you know, we, lighter is better. Compact is better. We just like stuff that's convenient. But um, the most important thing is to find that cane and that tip that works for you or works for the blind person that you're, you're buying it for. And, and then once you get, you know, the right cane, you get the right tip on it, the next thing you can think about is customizing it, making it look like, making it be your own. I, I know some folks, they just absolutely cringe at the idea of carrying, you know, a white cane when they've got 
a black or a brown handbag and black and brown shoes. They, they want a color match. They want to color coordinate. They don't want to stand out in the crowd. They, they don't really care if folks around them, as a matter of fact, they would rather the folks around them not know that they had a visual, you know, acuity problem. They were legally blind or blind. They just want to blend in and they just want to look good. Not a problem. You can always pick the cane that works best for you, the cane style that works best for you, and you can customize it. You can start with something as simple as going with your folding cane, taking the, the thing apart. Generally, it's not hard to take the shock cord or the bungee cord from the inside of a folding cane that holds it all together, take it apart and replace it with a different colored bungee cord. Now you can go from black to pink or orange or green or whatever you want to. Or you can get as elaborate as you could break out the spray can and you could paint the doggone thing whatever color you wanted to. Or if you're one of those outdoor types and you like to go hunting and fishing and stuff like that and you think it'd be really cool to have a camouflage cane, Hey, the same tape that you use to camouflage your bow and your other hunting equipment, guess what? It'll fit just fine on your folding cane or your one-piece long cane or even your stability cane. You can customize it any way you want to that way. And uh, as far as the grip goes, there's a good product out there. You know, it's called Lizard Skin. Kids use it on their baseball and their softball bats to put new grips on, new handles on their on their bats with. There's all kinds of different designs. There's all kinds of different colors of lizard skin that you can get. And you can redo the grip on your blind person cane. Whether it's a folding cane, whether it's the, the hook neck cane, you know, it looks like the shepherd's cane that's made for stability for a blind person. You can customize that thing to make it look like anything you want to. So, uh, as a matter of fact, for all you guys out there that are creative, I'd love for you to take a, a photograph or leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know how you have customized the look of your cane, how you've changed the color of it, or if you, you're some kind of carving person and you like to put some crimshaw or something like that in your cane. I, I'm just kind of curious. I'd like to see how, see how you guys do it, what, what kind of ideas you might have. So um, with all that said, thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you sticking with me. By all means, please leave a comment. And if you haven't, you enjoy what you see, you'd like to contribute, hit the subscription button. And while you're hitting that subscription button, go ahead and hit that notifications bell so you get notified anytime we uh, post new videos or we have some comments to share. And let's all interact together. Hey, thank you. Enjoy your day. We'll see you in the next one.